Okay, now we're moving on to the transition section. So swing your legs to the side and make your way on to all fours. We're just going to start with a little cat and cow to begin with, so hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips, and the finger pads, knees, everything kind of pressing down into the floor so you feel like you've got support for the whole torso. As we inhale, you're lifting the chin, lifting the chest, and lifting the tailbone. We're going to hold it here for a few breaths. As you do so, I want you to think about dragging your hands back towards your knees, lifting the chest up and through. Press the tops of the toenails down, and so you feel those muscles engaging around the hips, hugging the navel gently into the spine. As you exhale, round in the back, tuck the chin in, push the floor away. And think you're pushing your hands slightly forward to get a little bit more curve in the upper back. Once again, think about the tops of the feet pushing down, the navel hugging in. And then we're going to work between the two positions. As you inhale, lift the chin, lift the chest, lift the tailbone. And as you exhale, round, navel to the spine, tuck the chin in. Inhale, lift the chin, lift the chest, lift the tailbone. And then exhale, round, navel to the spine. One more time. Inhale, lift the chin, lift the chest, lift the tailbone. And then exhale, round, navel to the spine. Inhaling, bringing yourself back to a neutral position. And take your hands about 10 centimeters in front of your shoulders. So now we're going to add our baby wave. So as you exhale, round in the back, pushing the hands forward, hips towards your heels. Inhale, unfolding, pushing the hips forward, watching your navel the whole time as the shoulders come over the wrist, lower the belly, drag the hands back, lift the chest through. Keep the elbows a little bit bent so that you can roll the shoulder blades back and down a little bit better. As you exhale, push the hands forward, round in the back, hips towards the heels. And again, inhale, round in the back, get that rippling sensation as you come forward, let the hips lower, keep the feet alive so they're helping to support the spine, and exhale, push the hands forward, round in the back. Let's do one more like this. Inhale, waving through the spine, shoulders come over the wrist, then lower the hips on the exhale, lift the chest, take a deep breath in here, try to get more space across the collarbones, and then exhale, push the hands forward, round in the back. This time we're going to come back forward, but when the shoulders get over the wrists, we're going to place the forearms down on the floor. You can keep the knees down if you feel you need more support for the back, otherwise let's press the feet away so that we've got our forearm plank. We're going to just start to activate core a little bit more deeply, making circles with the hips in the air. Just do three in one direction and then swap sides, do three in the other direction. Keep the feet nice and alive. And then bring it into a neutral position. Imagine you're dragging your elbows back. Hold it for just another breath there, keeping the feet really awake. And then exhale, lowering everything down to the floor. Go ahead and rest your forehead on your hands if you need a little break. So for any of our balances, our stability work, we also need the upper back to be really active. So that's what we're headed to next. We're doing what I call a circular cobra. So placing the hands in front of the shoulders so you've got a little bit more support, also slightly wider than your shoulders would be helpful. So classic cobra, we just inhale, lift the chest, and lift the rib cage, keeping the feet pressing down. And exhale, go ahead and just fold back down. We're gonna now take that action in a circular way. So as you inhale, lift up to the right, activating the right side of the back, move it up through center, and then down to the left. And just make about three or four circles over to the right before we swap. And just allow yourself to engage through the back. Try not to tense up in the shoulders. You don't have to make a huge movement. You just have to make an efficient movement. And think of the efficiency coming from the back, not from the shoulders or clenching the butt cheeks. Let's take that in the other direction. Lifting up through the left and down and around to the right and up through the left and down and around to the right. One more time, up through the left and down and around to the right. And once again, just go ahead and rest your forehead in your hands, take a few breaths. Let's 
On your next inhale, lift the head. Place the hands next to the chest and push yourself back through all fours. Taking the hands a little bit further away, we're gonna work for our first downward facing dog. So tucking the toes under, push the hands forward so you send the hips back, then try to keep the back nice and long, and then lifting the knees up first, unfold to our first downward facing dog. So of course, what we wanna do is just start that initial conversation with the hamstrings, with the back of the body, the lower back, the back of the neck, just walking the feet on the spot, bending the right knee, bending the left knee. And you might not ever straighten your legs completely today. That might be something that doesn't happen for a while. It de depends on your hamstrings. Don't force them, just try to ease them into movement. Let them find their own way of getting there. Just a couple more breaths like that. And then exhale, bring the knees back down to the floor. Sit back on the heels and just rest your hands on your thighs. Close your eyes and take a couple breaths here in and out. And just feeling that sense of everything being a little bit more awake and active. The heart's beating a little bit more. One more breath there. And then as you inhale, gently opening the eyes and come back to all fours or downward facing dog. I'll demonstrate the first side from downward facing dog and the second side from all fours. So you've got different options just depending on how you're feeling in your shoulders and your wrists. So from downward facing dog, peeling up and back. I'm going to bring the feet a little bit closer together, lift the right leg up and back and bend the left knee. A little pulsing with that left leg just to fire up that thigh. Not too much, I don't want to overtire it. As you exhale, bring the right knee towards the chest and then place the shin down on the floor. Walk your hands around to the left and swing that right foot out to the right so it makes like a little kickstand as you place your left toes, your left foot down on the floor. Turn the left toes to the side and come all the way up to what I call baby triangle. So we're gonna play with two different ranges of motion here. As you exhale, you're reaching down the left leg, reaching up and over with the right arm. Inhale to come up. Fold forward, place the hands down on the floor, bending the left knee, so getting into the adductors and the groins. Inhale, coming up, big circle with the arms up and over. Inhale to come back up, place the hands down, Squat low, so you're trying to get into the thighs. Inhale, coming all the way up and over. Nice long stretch through the side body. And then exhaling, hands down, opening up into the groins, into the adductors. One more time, inhale, up and over, side reach down the left leg. Coming all the way back up, hands down, lunging into the left. And then inhale, coming all the way up. This time we're going to hold it here, reaching up. So think about this right leg and pushing that right foot down into the floor. You'll feel the left thigh start to activate a little bit more, keeping the lower abdominals engaged a little bit more. And if it hurts your neck or your shoulder to hold the arm up, go ahead and grab the back of the head. Lead with the elbow instead. Take a deep breath in and out. And then on your next inhale, release the arm. And we're gonna windmill all the way over till you place the right hand down on the floor. Make sure it's in line with your right shoulder. Turn your left toes to face the side and reaching up to the sky. So this is gonna be a baby version of the balance that we're gonna do later on in class. So push down into the right hand, the right shin, lift up through the left arm and then float the left leg up. So this is our one-legged balance that we're going to be doing later on. Standing on the right leg. Breathing into the chest, breathing into the back. One more breath there. And then as you exhale, place the left foot down. Place the left hand down. Walk your hands around. And you're going to slide your left leg away until you can sit your hips on the inside of your right foot. Now, if that's too much pressure on your knee, your thigh, your ankle, you're gonna grab one of your blocks and you're gonna sit your hips on the block. All right, so then you relieve that pressure. Okay, so that's one of the options. If you've got any knee issues, go ahead and just release the leg and turn it into an internal 
angle. So just experiment with what works for you. And now we're just going to talk a little bit more to that hamstring and get into the spiral in the back. So inhale, arms out to the side. As you exhale, lead with your right elbow towards your left knee. So you spiral down and around. Inhale, open up. Exhale, opposite side. Left elbow to the right knee. Inhale, open up. Exhale, elbow to the knee. Inhale, open up. Exhale, elbow to the other knee. One more time each side. Inhale, open up. Exhale, right elbow to left knee. Inhale, open up. Exhale, left elbow to right knee. Inhale, open up. This time, square your rib cage over the left leg. Place the hands down and snaking through the spine. A little bit right and left. Let the head go. Let the jaw go. Walking forward over your left leg. So you're finding a bit of stillness here, letting the breath rise into the back, making sure the back of the neck is nice and long. And if it's too much for you, remember, you can always just place the hands down on the floor for support. But of course, if it's a little bit more comfortable, placing the forearms down. And if you're really comfortable, go ahead and grab and hold the foot, as long as you keep the shoulders relaxed in that equation. One more breath here. And then as you inhale, lift the chest. Place the hands back in front of the hips. Lift yourself up and turn the face back towards the front of the mat, coming back to all fours. Let's do a waving vinyasa from downward facing dog before we go over to the other side. So tuck the toes under, push the hips up and back. So you're pushing the hands forward to send the hips back. So we're going to do our waving vinyasa. We did it the first round from the knees. Now we're going to experiment with it from downward facing dog. So as you inhale, lift the heels round in the back. Push the hips and the shoulders forward until the shoulders are over the wrists. And exhale, lower the hips. Lift the chest through. You're dragging your hands back. You can always put the knees down. Inhale to find that space. Remember, keep it nice and light. And then exhale, lift the navel, push the hands forward, send the hips back to downward facing dog. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, lifting the hips, rounding in the back, curling forward. Exhale, lower the hips, lower the knees if you need to, lift the chest through. Shoulders sliding down the back, and then the exhale, push the hands forward, shift the hips back, hips up to downward facing dog. One last time. Inhale, curling forward, rounding the back until the shoulders are over the wrists. Exhale, hips down, knees down. Unless you're comfortable with the knees up, then stick with that. You'll figure out what works best for you. On your next exhale, push the hands forward, send the hips back to downward facing dog. Now you can take a couple breaths here and then proceed from downward facing dog or I'm going to demonstrate the left side from all fours to make it a little bit easier for the easier variation. So from all fours, as you inhale, lift the left leg back and away. Get really strong through the back and just a little pulsing with that leg. So if you're in downward facing dog, you're pulsing your right thigh right now. As you exhale, bring the left knee towards the nose, a little hugging in at the navel, and exhale, place the left shin down. Walk the hands around to the right, turn the left shin out so it makes a kickstand like sensation, and then open up the right leg out to the side. So we should all be in the same place now. Let's turn the right toes out towards the back of the mat and inhale, arms coming all the way up for our baby trikonasana. As you exhale, reach the right hand down the right leg, left arm up and over. Inhale to come back up and we're revealing the arms around. Bend the right knee going into that lunge. Inhale, coming all the way up and over, lift through the chest. Exhale, side reach down the right leg. Inhale, come up. And exhale, lunging into that right thigh. Two more times. Inhale, engage through the navel. Get the transverse abdominis to help. Think of it as the anchor of your core. Coming all the way up and around. Exhale, bending the right knee. Last time. Inhale, coming all the way up and around. Reaching down the right leg, up and over with the left arm. And then inhale, coming up, all the way around, bending the right knee. 
Inhale, we're coming all the way back up again. This time we're going to stay reaching down the right leg, up and over with the left arm. Now remember, if this has caused any tension in your shoulder or your neck, grab a hold of the back of the head, lead with the elbow. Keep breathing into the left side of the body and push the left foot down. So you start to feel that stability coming from the floor. We're going to need that when we get into our balance. Navel's gently hugging in, shoulders dropping down the back. And then as you inhale, coming all the way up. Exhale, place that left hand down on the floor, underneath your left shoulder, pushing down into the left shin. Reach out to the sky with the right arm. Let's turn the right toes towards the side. Hug the shoulders into the back, hug the navel into the spine, and then floating the right leg up. Now remember, if you've got a wobble going on here, that's fine. It's okay to wobble. That's what's gonna tell your body to engage in those stabilizing muscles. So that's what you want to look for, is finding what muscles you can recruit to help you instead of getting rigid um, in any place in particular, especially the shoulders. One more breath there. And then as you exhale, place that right foot back down. Walk your hands around back in front of your hips. Remember, if you need your block, have that handy. We're going to sit the hips inside the left heel. So this is where we put the hips right on the block so that I don't have so much tension in the left thigh, the knee, or the ankle. Now starting that twisting with the elbows. Inhale, arms out to the side. Exhale, left elbow towards the right knee. Inhale, unspiral. Exhale, right elbow towards the left. Inhale, come up. And exhale, spiral and fold at the same time. Inhale to come back up. Exhale, spiral and fold over the left leg. One more time each side. And as you do so, feel like you've got that sense that you're wrapping all the way around from the hips to the rib cage to the shoulders. Inhale to come all the way up. Exhale, square yourself over the right leg. So placing the hands down and lifting the chest. And then a little snaking through the spine. So I want to allow the spine some mobility as I'm going forward. I want to keep the right leg active. The foot is alive. I've got what I call little Barbie feet. So the ball of the foot is pushing away a little bit more than the heel. Making sure the back of the neck is nice and long. Once again, this might be as far as you go. That's fine. Just keep breathing. Allow yourself to relax in the jaw and the throat. If you're comfortable further down, anywhere along the way, you know, just check in with yourself. Make sure you haven't gone too far too soon. Swallow deeply every once in a while just to make sure there's no tension in the neck. One more breath there. And then as you inhale, walking the hands up. Place the hands back in front of the hips so you can push back up. Walking your hands back round to the front of your mat, back to all fours. Tuck the toes under, back to downward facing dog. Or you can do the baby wave from your knees, because that's what we're headed to. As you inhale, lift the heels round in the back, coming all the way forward. Exhale, lower the hips and the knees if you need to. Lift the chest through, make sure you're not locking out the elbows. And then exhale, push the hands forward, send the hips back, downward facing dog. One more breath there. And as you exhale, bring the knees down and sit the hips back on the heels. Go ahead and rest the hands on the thighs. Close the eyes. And just take a few nice, deep, full inhales and exhales. Just letting all that information organize itself in your body. And just enjoying a moment of stillness. And then on your next inhale, open your eyes. And we're going to do a shoulder opener before we proceed. So if you're uncomfortable sitting back on your heels, you can always grab your block and set it either on the lowest part or the next highest part. Once again, so you're going to relieve pressure on the knees and the ankles. But of course, if you'd rather change up completely and sit cross-legged, that's also fine. So when you're ready, once you're sitting comfortably, inhale, take the arms out to the side, and exhale, crossing the right arm over the left. Give yourself a hug so that you start to allow yourself to bring the elbows beyond each other a little bit. 
and then making a 90 degree angle with the left arm, reach the right arm forward and around and see if you can grab, get the palms or the fingers to the palms. If not, grab the thumb, you can grab the wrist. If you feel like you're really far away, just get a belt or a towel and grab either end of that so that you've got some leverage. Try to keep the elbows up away from the chest and the shoulder blades hugging down the back. Take a few breaths in and out here. And as you start to just turn the chin from the right side to the left side, or ear towards the shoulder, just start feeling that connection of the shoulders up into the neck. And this is really important because we do hold a lot of tension in that connection of the skull, through the neck, through the shoulders. So start your investigation with the neck first. And then imagine you're drawing circles on the ceiling with your fingertips. And you start to allow the whole shape to move. And as you do so, you're, you're going to feel the areas that are tighter across your shoulder blades, or across the top of the shoulders, or maybe underneath the armpits down into the ribcage. Make sure the head doesn't get stuck, that it follows the line of movement wherever you're headed. But you get this great opportunity to have an internal massage. And if you find a particular shape that feels like it's got a little bit of stickiness to it, something that feels really resistant, then just hold stillness there. And it doesn't matter what it looks like. Remember, you have to think of the poses coming from the inside out. So whatever you're feeling inside, if there's something that feels very useful, a shape that allows you to get into someplace a little bit more intense, pause there, breathe into it, soften the jaw, relax in the throat. And then inhale, bringing everything up to neutral, and exhale. Shake the arms out, turn your head a little bit. It's like hitting the reset button, just allowing your body to let the blood circulate through the shoulders efficiently. And then we're swapping sides. Take the arms out to the side again. This time crossing the left arm over the right. Grab a hold of the shoulder so you can just give yourself a hug. Elbows try to cross over each other as best as they can. Making a 90 degree angle with the right arm and then the left arm reaches up and around. And once again, grab a hold of whatever you, you can so that you've got a little bit of resistance in the hands. Lift the elbows off the chest, soften the shoulder blades down the back. And once again, just start with the head and neck, maybe making a few circles with the jaw. And once again, when you've got the neck relaxed a little bit more, start making shapes, circles to begin with, with the fingertips. But of course, any direction that feels useful for you, that feels like you can get somewhere into the back, into the shoulders, into the rib cage. Maybe deeper into the neck, the collarbones, anything that's connected. And believe me, everything is connected. You just get to take this opportunity to feel it and experience it. Once again, when you find that particularly sticky area, hold stillness. Negotiate with the neck and the jaw and the throat, making sure they're relaxed. Let the breath take over a little bit more. Swallow deeply so that you know you're relaxed in the throat and the jaw. And then bringing everything up to neutral. And exhaling. Release the arms. Once again, just give everything a little wiggle. And let's move into child's pose. Resting the forehead on the hands. Or if you're comfortable with the forehead on the floor, hands back towards your feet. And then inhaling, unfolding from your child pose. And we're proceeding to the dynamic section of this sequence. So we're going to come back to downward facing dog to start with. Tucking the toes under, remember to push the hands forward so that you feel the serratus, the muscles underneath your armpits, start to help support the shoulders. Remember, in downward facing dog, you never have to have your legs completely straight until it feels comfortable. So just taking a couple breaths here, just reconnecting with the back line of the body, extending through the hamstrings, extending through the heels as much as you can. 
and then bending your knees, looking forward, walking your feet up towards your hands. We're going to keep the feet hip distance apart and start with the knees bent and relax the head and the neck. And so just for a few breaths here, just allow yourself to kind of wiggle in the spine. Now remember, you've got your blocks nearby, so if you want to have your blocks to help prop you up, even all the way up so that you don't have too much strain on the back. Relaxing in the back of the neck, breathing into the back of the rib cage. One more breath there. And then you can go ahead and move your blocks out of the way and place the hands on your thighs just above your knees. So we're going to go back to that cat and cow action that we did on all fours. As you inhale, stick the chest out, stick the sit bones out, roll the shoulder blades down the back. And as you exhale, round in the back, tuck the chin in, you're going to pushing your thighs away slightly. Inhale, lift the chin, lift the chest, lift the tailbone, and exhale round, navel to the spine. Inhale, lift the chin, lift the chest, lift the tailbone, and exhale round, tailbone under, chin tucks in. Once more, inhale, lift the chin, lift the chest, lift the tailbone, exhale round. This time we're going to continue in that round shape and roll all the way up. As you come upright, scoop your hands around and behind you, hug the shoulder blades down as you reach the arms up. And then exhale, bend the knees. It's like a sense of melting all the way back down to the floor. Fingertips to the floor or hands to the shins. Knees bent as much as they need to. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, place your hands back on your thighs. In, exhale, round in the back, tuck the chin in. And then inhale, lift the chest, stick the sit bones out, stick the tailbone out. Exhale, round in the back, rolling up one vertebrae at a time. Once again, scoop the air behind you, and then reach up, lift the chest. And as the palms come together, bend the knees, fold all the way down to the floor, fingertips to the floor of the shins. Inhale, lift the chest. And exhale, hands back on the thighs. Inhale, stick the chest out, stick the butt out. And exhale, round, navel to the spine, continue to roll up one vertebrae at a time. The shoulders drop down the back, the arms reach up and forward. And exhale, one last time, coming all the way back down. When you're ready, inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, place the hands just above the knees. Inhale, lift the chin, lift the chest, lift the tailbone, and then exhale round, navel to the spine, rolling up all the way. When you get to the top, the shoulder blades soften, the hands kind of scoop around to face forward, reaching all the way up. Exhale, hands to prayer, this time just bring the thumbs to rest on the chest, close the eyes, and take a few breaths here. Once again, just feel that sensation of being in the body. The spine is really alive. The breath is still working for you. The shoulders are soft, and the jaw and the throat completely relaxed. And then inhaling, opening your eyes. And let's bring the feet a little bit closer together, a little bit further up towards the front of your mat. Let's soften both knees and we're going to start by picking up the left knee. So you're going to hug the left knee into the chest. Now we're going to just practice our balance here. So a little pulsing with that right leg just to fire up the thigh. And then see, can you take the hands to the hips and start to lengthen through that right thigh, maybe reaching all the way up towards the ceiling. Another little pulse there, hugging the navel in. And then as you exhale, hands to the hips, and fold that back leg behind you, stretch the toes out, and find a nice high lunge. So the right knee bends 90 degrees, the left heel is up, and the left thigh is strong. So I get that sense of buoyancy that works through the thighs, but I'm drawing the femur bones in towards the pelvis to keep stable. Scoop the arms forward to reach up. This is our high lunge. We're going to keep coming back here, facing both ways. On your, ex on your inhale, Lift up a little bit.
little bit. Now we're going to change the toes. So now the toes are turning in a slight 45 degree angle away from each other. Heels in, bend the knees. This is horse stance. I'm pushing the hands away, right? And as I'm here, once again, I'm not getting rigid. There's power coming from the feet to the thighs, okay? Then to continue on, I'm going to face the back of the room for the high lunge again, but I'm going to turn the right heel up, scoop the air forward, and come back to my high lunge, this time facing the opposite direction. I'm going to put all those moves together. So as you inhale, straight through that left leg, turn the right heel flat, and exhale, push away to your horse stance. Inhale as you lift up, turn the left heel up, and exhale, scoop the air forward, high lunge over the right. Inhale as you come up, exhale, push the feet down, push the hands away. Inhale, lift it back up, turn the right heel up. Exhaling, find your high lunge over the left leg. Inhale, bring it back through center, place the right heel flat. Exhale, horse stance. Inhale, coming up, lift through the left heel, Exhale, high lunge over the right leg. Inhale, bring it back through center. Exhale, horse stance, and we're going to hold it here. Place your hands on your knees, and just a little pulse here. So you got a little bit into the inner thighs, into the adductors in the beginning of class, and just kind of revisiting that action, getting the thighs powered up. One more little pulse there. And then inhale, straightening through both legs. Turn the right toes in so they're almost on a 45 degree angle going towards the back. And turn the left toes out. You want to grab a hold of your block now and put it all the way upright, just beyond your left foot, but slightly out to the side. Let's start with the hands on the hips. Inhale, lift the rib cage up. As you exhale, send your sit bones back and slightly away over that right heel. Start reaching down the left shin. And stop where you feel it's comfortable enough to keep your chest open. You don't want to reach further and drop your chest down. So the chest needs to stay open. As you inhale, reaching the right arm up and over the top of the head, we're going to make a few circles with that right arm. Keep the feet pushing down and away, keep the legs really alive. And then change directions. Big circles around. Feeling that connection of the shoulder into the spine, into the rib cage, into the waist. On your next exhale, place your right hand back on your right hip. Look down at your left foot, bend your left knee, grab a hold of your block with your left hand, and then tap your toes a little bit closer. Now we're moving into our full balance. This is what we've been working towards. Make sure the left hand is going to be underneath the left shoulder. Shift the weight into the left leg and float the right leg up. Keep that right leg and that right foot alive. Imagine you're kicking the heel away. Hug the navel to the spine and to start with, keep the eyes focused on one point on the floor. If you start to feel like you've got that balance and you want to experiment, Rotate the right shoulder open and reach up towards the ceiling with the right hand. Keep breathing. Keep the back of the neck long. Keeping both feet awake and alive. And see if you can get that energy of pushing down into that left hand. Let's do one more breath here. And then exhale. Just fold the knees and place the right foot next to the left foot. Move your block aside. Hands to the knees or the thighs. Inhale. Stick the chest out. Stick the sit bones out. Exhale, round. Rolling all the way up one vertebrae at a time. Scoop the air behind you to turn the palms forward. Reaching all the way up. And exhale. Hands to prayer position in front of the heart. Close the eyes. And once again, just focus on your breath for a few moments. Let all that information settle itself in the body. Just enjoying a moment of stillness. And then inhaling, gently opening the eyes. Exhaling, releasing the hands to the hips. Once again, let's soften in both knees, shifting the weight into the left foot. This time I'm going to hug the right knee. So just experimenting with that balance and just 
It's having that neurological conversation so that my body starts to prepare itself to find that stability. Keeping that gentle pulse in the left leg, maybe letting go and reaching the hands all the way up, maybe a little extending through the left leg, and then bending again a few times. Noticing what's going on with the shoulders, if they're trying to creep up, just allow them to relax. See what happens. Navel's hugging in. One more pulse there. And then as you exhale, bring the hands back down to the hips. Tilt forward so you can step back long with that right leg. Find your high lunge. So take a moment. Figure it out with your feet. You might have stepped back too far or not far enough. So make sure that you get to a position where you can bend your left knee 90 degrees. Keep some stability in your right leg. And again, pushing down but sending the femur bones into the pelvis so you've got some support here. Scoop the arms forward and up. And just a pulse here in our high lunge before we start that same sequence we did on the other side. So on your next inhale, extend through that left leg a little bit, push the right heel down, turn the feet out slightly, pressing away <laughs> into horse stance. Inhale, lift it up, lift the left heel as you turn, everything rotates, and scoop the hands forward, reaching up high lunge over the right. Inhale, extend a little bit through the right leg, left heel down, and exhale, push it away to horse stance. Inhale, lift it up, pick up the right heel, turn over the left foot, exhale into high lunge. Inhale through the center, exhale, push it away. Inhale through the center, pick up the left heel, exhale, high lunge over the right. One more time, inhale back through center, exhale, pushing everything away. Inhale, lifting up the, left, the right heel, turn over the left foot, High lunge over the left. Inhale, bring it back through center. And exhale here. We're going to hold it here. Place the hands back on the knees or the thighs. This time just having a little bit of a deeper conversation with the inner thighs. As you exhale, dropping the left shoulder towards the right knee. Inhale, back through center. Exhale, opposite side. So you're getting length in the side body as well. Inhale, back through center. Exhale, drop it down. Gentle pressure in that inner thigh. Inhale, back through center. And exhale, over the left leg. One more time each side. Inhale, back through center. Exhale, over the right leg. Inhale, back through center. Exhale, over the left leg. And then inhale, back through center. Straighten through the legs, coming all the way up. Look at your left foot. Turn the left toes in so that they're on about a 45 degree angle and the right foot out. Go ahead and grab your belt, uh, this is a block, and place it just beyond your right toes, a little bit out to the side, so not right in the same line. That'll just give you a little bit more leverage. So start with our Trikonasana variation first, hands to the hips, send the hips back and slightly away behind your left heel. Keep your right foot, your right leg nice and alive. Reaching down, just far enough so that you still keep the chest open. And then we're reaching the left arm up over the top of the head and making big circles. Opening up the chest as much as you can, reaching down and around. Keep the feet really alive, keep the, the legs alive. Keep the back of the neck mobile. If you just want to look down at the floor because you're worried about losing your balance, that's fine. One more big circle, and then as you exhale, place that left hand on the left hip. Look down at your right foot, bend your right knee. Place your right hand on the block, and again, just tap your left foot a little bit closer so you feel you've got your weight over this foot in this hand. And then it's that sense of pushing down to float the left leg up. Now remember we did that baby variation earlier on in class. It's very, very similar. Keeping the left leg alive, keeping the transverse abdominis helping out. If it's comfortable, reach up to the sky with the left arm. Keep the back of the neck nice and long. Keep breathing. And if you're wobbling and falling over, that's fine. You just keep trying. The body will start to find its way. Two more breaths there. And then when you're ready, on your next exhale, just bend both knees. Step the feet together, move your block out of the way, 
And this time, place the hands on the floor, step back to downward facing dog. One last waving vinyasa as you inhale, lift the heels round in the back, pushing everything forward. And exhale, lower the hips. You can lower the knees if it feels more comfortable. A nice, deep, upward facing dog, lifting the chest. Exhale, shifting the weight back to downward facing dog. Just take one breath here, in and out. As you exhale, bring the knees down to the floor, sit back in the heels. Rest in child's pose. And we're done.